uh, welcome to this uh, joint uh, webinar organized by the Singapore Computer Society, the Business Continuity Chapter, as well as the Data Center uh, Special Interest Group. Right. Um, my name is Mika. I'm the president of the Business Continuity Chapter. Right. Um, so you no, know, just just to begin. Well, first of all, I hope all of you are uh, keeping well and safe. I, I, um, I believe many of you probably will be joining us from home. Um, so just to begin, I think uh, if we think about it right now, uh, there are many areas of close collaboration right, between business continuity, disaster recovery, uh, as well as data center. So hence, you know, both our, our chapters were just thinking uh, it may be a good idea to uh, bring the two uh, chapters together and have a joint um, webinar. So um, to just be, to carry on with this, the program, so this is the program for today. Um, following this, uh, we'll have the session um, by Mr. Ong Leong Chuan, then followed by uh, a session by uh, Tiu Kiet, who is the chair of SES, the data center special interest group. After which we'll have a panel discussion. So I'll be the moderator. The panelists will be Leong Chuan, Tiu Kiet, as well as Benjamin uh, from NTU, who is also a school member of uh, SES. Okay. And for the q and I'll just, I'll touch a little bit on that later on when we come to it, just how do we admin the q and And you know, if, if L goes well, I guess we'll, we'll target to finish at about 3.30 uh, p.m. Okay, so let me first, uh, let me just do a quick introduction of the speakers. Uh, so first of all, uh, Mr. Ong Leong Chuan, he's the conveyor of uh, SMF SBO Working Group on Business Continuity Management. Uh, he will share more about his experience uh, later on. He has many, many years of experience and I've always enjoyed listening to him when he, uh, when he gives a, a talk because he has a lot of real life experience and also very um, interesting. Uh, the second speaker for this afternoon is Mr. Wong Tiu Kiet. He's the current chairman of the SES Data Center Special Interest Group. So uh, he will share a little bit more on the data center uh, a bit. So the last panel, uh, later on the panelists, we have Benjamin Yeo, who is the Divisional Director of NTU, as well as the as a ex -co member of the Business Continuity Chapter, BCC for short. Uh, so I'd like to thank all of them for taking their time to uh, be panelists and to give share their experiences uh, at this webinar. So uh, without much delay, let me hand over the floor to uh, Leong Chuan, who will share on the introduction on the revised ISO 22301 2020 and the ISO 22313 2020. Uh, if you're wondering what's the difference between the two, I guess you listen to uh, Leong Chuan and then after that, uh, you should be able to know the difference. So let me just hand over the time uh, to Leong Chuan, please. Mm, thank you. Um, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Thanks for attending this uh, short uh, discussion on the update on the ISO 22301 and ISO 22313. So I will, I will spend about half an hour to give a quick update on these two. Huh? This was the content. I will talk about threats and risks that we are facing today in Singapore and also why Singapore government and agency support the development of new ISO standards. Then next one, I'll give a quick quick uh, introduction of 22301 and 22313. Then we go now to, I call it chapter 8, actually para 8, the elements of BCM. Then we have a conclusion. Okay? I hope you enjoy the presentation. First, I have to talk about myself. Who am I? Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't look at my name. My name was given by my father because he, he, he believed that I need to, to, to work in an environment full of water. That's why I come up with Qian, Bai Sui Qian. So the fact is, really, is correct. God, I started working in PSA, then followed by PUB, you know, all dealing with water, water, water. Okay. So my qualification is because I'm working the almost 40 over years in power related. Nah? So a lot of problem, pollution problem in power stations. So I got a PUB scholarship to study uh, pollution science during UMIS. And uh, beside that, I'm also interested in looking at all the emergency response crisis and nothing like this. So become um, learn from DRI, get a CBCP, and also IT and things like this. And uh, in order to qualify to be a BCM instructor, I learned from the DRI uh, USA. 
and my background is I'm from the field compact engineers. Uh. So uh, my highest appointment was acting CEO, commanding officer of uh, about 800 soldiers. So I standard the uh, SCSC. Uh, SCSC stands for some can, some cannot cost. Uh. So you have two years training. It helps me a lot. They on in the planning, on the preparation and response. Then my career, I started with a chemist in a, a Sinogo power station uh, in 1975. So later on, I become the chief chemist of PUB. Uh, don't forget that we're not drinking the water quality. Uh, don't, you always forgot that somebody could control it. Uh, that was one of my contribution. Then later on, they think Singapore government, with all the corporatization thing change. Uh, then we become power Saraya. Then because of uh, things like this, later on, it go into desegregation. Uh, so even, even earlier than some other companies. Uh, so interview, but, 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 but because of the uh, regulation and all this. So later on, we, we, we fought and we come arbitration. So I come out and do the BCM uh, training and all this. Okay. So now I'm, I'm the trainer for in Singapore as Institute of Power and also SBF. Okay. So all together, I spent my, about 40 over years in the utilities industry. And uh, if you want to buy 4D, you can consider 9756 That's my uh, my phone number. So you can see that for the past easily 10 over years, even country like China, they want to learn from us. Why is it Singapore can become, you know, the world one of the best, first or second best reliable power supply company? There must be a reason behind. So one of the things that we introduce is BCM system, uh, to do the emergency response preparedness. So you can see that we share all of this in even with China in April 2011. Uh, you can see that, and we have called the delivery of in Mandarin. So let's talk about threats. What is threats? Threat is the potential cost of an unwanted incident. We don't want to see unwanted incident. So the potential cost is threat. Then you cause harm to this, to this, to this. Look at, look at what happened. 2017, uh, you see, cyber attack. Uh, May 2017, look at the attack, Delco, attack school. And look at within 24 hours, the number of cities affected by this. But uh, you know, the time Singapore side, hey, we, are, we almost did not you know, have, have any major, major incident. Uh, must thank Singapore government and also the agency. Besides this, for those in the power side, we are very concerned about o o operation technology, OTA. So the cyber attack in Ukraine, you can see that, you know, there are a lot of things go wrong because of this. And if you're not careful, you know, implement uh, preventive measure and respond. One day you'll find you can black out the whole Changi airport, then how? So these are the things we learn and prepare for it. And besides the threat of the pandemic, uh, H7N9, now with COVID-19. Uh, then for those men holding key appointment, uh, that's say top management, there are other threats. So be very careful uh, that the incident happens. So be very, very careful. Sometimes you can be one small incident, you know, it can destroy your career, your future, your family. So if you summarize this, you'll find that in the different group, I just give example, this example. I can communicable diseases. Uh, now you got COVID-19. The next one could be disease X, it could be disease Y. And operation side, your IT, com network failure. What about the supplier, your critical supplier? And other things like power disruption and denial access of to building that 911. And the other thing like fire, so it's subsidized haze. Right? Uh, so on security side, you're very concerned about cyber attacks. Uh, things can go wrong. I think you'll receive a lot of uh, information about this. You are the, most of you are the members of ICS. And breach of physical security. Uh, this one we're talking about specifically on terrorist attack. Reputation, adverse media reports can destroy a person. So be very careful about, about this. Uh, be careful. Especially today we you all the way, you know, Bad news can transfer very, very fast. So there are other things. What are the others? Why these others are so important? Because when you do your risk identification, you forget about others, things can go wrong. Uh, like for example, now we talk about data center security. Uh, you go to the website, it give you how many pages of information. You can see the one example, like even the main causes of this, you can be poorly configured infrastructure, you can be cultural problem, you can have incomplete disaster recovery provisioning. So this, I will leave it to, uh, to get uh, the next speaker to, to share with you a more thing on data centers. 
emerging threat like solar flare. We all think that, oh, so far away. So what's that to do with me? But you can see that happened in 1973, 6 million people, you know, lost power in Canada. What about other emerging threats? Example like climate change. Do you think, oh, that one very long, you know, long later, but yeah, a lot of things you need to prepare now and not later. So some of the emerging threats that come in, especially depend on who are you working in an organization. It's our duty to look at what can go wrong and prepare for it. So let's take a look. Threat will come up with unwanted incident and cause harm to this, this, this. Can we do something? What can we do? Can we say no threat? I want to go to a country, no threat. Okay? Mahami Kaki always tell me, there's only one place that you don't see threats. And that place is called heaven. So what? I need to go to heaven in order to, to find a threat-free place. So you cannot. So things will go wrong. Next thing is, if threat happen, can we say that you will not have unwanted incident? Some can be done, some cannot be done. So let's see what we can do. And next one, if unwanted incident happen, can we minimize the harm to individual, to organization, to environment? Answer is yes. There are some things we can do. So what is a possible solution? That's why we introduced business continuity, BC. Not CB, yeah, it's BC. So what is BC? This is a new definition uh, introduced in 22301. Capability of an organization to continue the delivery of products and services. That's one thing. Within acceptable time. That time frame is very important time. And also what is the redefined capacity during the disruption. So business continue talking about your time, your capacity, when something go wrong. So this is BC. So your benefit of BCM system is to prepare for, provide this, so you can manage organization, continue to operate during disruption. The sentence is very simple. The challenges is, do you know what to do? So take a look. This is all in the 22313. This is a guide to explain to the three one. It says that if you, this is the level of operation, uh, normally this level. But if you do not have a BC MS system, something go wrong, but power failure, pump, it come down. You know, you look at this, uh, exercise is fine. Without BC, it hit direct. Okay. Then it takes a longer time to come out. And even you say, okay, I want a minimum acceptable capacity, but you cannot meet because it takes longer time to do it. If you have a BCM system, you will see that it hit, but it will go down to this level, and this is the minimum acceptable level, and it takes a quicker time to recover. This is RTU, you know, recovery time objective. You go, you come out, and you go back to this within a very sh short possible time. These are talking about sudden disruption, for example, power failure. What about COVID 19, for example? If you are in a, in a, in a BCM uh, implementer co company, you will know that they have got a lot of things coming, bad news coming, a gradual disruption. So you have to prepare until it happens and you go down this way and you prepare and you go up, up, up all the way up and even before you RTU. And this is without you go further down. You will find more information example if you will refer to the ISO 22313. So, Someone share saying that that even the COVID-19, they got winners and they got losers. Winners like video conferencing, e-commerce delivery services, healthcare services, and online services. So some of you may be enjoying now because you are the, under the winners group. The loser, travel. You look at SIA, look at other major MI, entertainment, look at the restaurant. So every time the, the crisis called WeChi, uh, you got a problem, you got also opportunity. So depend on which services you're in. So Singapore support developed on this ISO standard. I cannot understand why Singapore government working so hard with the support of the you know, people, you know, and the agency. Look at look, there are many bad things happening since two, 2000. Uh, example, can you remember him? Uh, our, our hero, Mas Salamat. Uh, you look at the Union of Time, uh, the D, PM and also Mr. Wong Kan Seng, what he said about all this. And what about natural gas supply disruption? Because you want to save, uh, to reduce carbon dioxide emission, now we will gas. 
but NG the moment the valve shut for some reason only, all the downstream your problem. So the time the DPM, uh, they will say something about you cannot because of one thing go wrong, the whole system down. And next time when something go wrong, you are know, image in trouble. So George Hill will say this. Do you want to see when something go wrong, power failure, power failure, you affect your 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 the data center operation? So what about soil subsidence? It happened. Right? Remember 2004 and remember some of the key person now there. We were activated in the SP site, you know, go down to the site because they say that the, the sub soil subsidence will be caused by got, got by Singapore Power Group, got all the of the cable and all these other things. And we said, no, it's not because of that. So we, remit, we use emergency response to the site and now o'clock, the news come out, not because of us. Look at the site. Things can go wrong today. Even today, there's so many work going on. And Hayes, the last few years now, Hayes, we should thank our neighboring government. And swine flu, 2009. Okay, so the Singapore standard, how do we do it? Uh, look at 2005, we launch, these are the standard committee and we launch the draft standard and later on you see that 2008 you can see that our friend uh, two kids standing next to me uh, this committee we also include the people uh, from SCDF who draft the Singapore standard SS540 and we publish uh, in 2008 during the time the whole world maybe about 12 or 13 country you know have their own national standard of BCM so with this Singapore standard the government launched the National BCM program in November 2008 by Professor Jakuma. And the main thing is this. They are concerned about terrorist attack. They are also concerned about pandemic. So that you see, from there until now, we find that the government come up with money and ask a $30 million as organization to implement this. And they pay 70% of the cost that you incur. And you can see SES. Singapore Computer Society worked with SBF, also launched all this BCM conference in April 2009. Now we see the con contribution from SES. So we, beside that, we also have a flu pandemic BC program. We're surprised. How many countries you know, in the world have this national level of flu pandemic BC program? Do you see this in the United States? And what is this? Uh, so we conduct uh, this training on the, the flu the pandemic using Singapore uh, SS540. We have a three days training. I was one of the trainers to share. Uh, so we share this and later on give you one year later and you are certified and they got a stand. Then you will say you are flu pandemic ready. And any kind of organization last time certified today, I think they enjoy it because they will know they are prepared to do, you know, to deal with these threats. And also other standards, this Singapore standard. Let me go into the world. We talk about IT 27031. And this is the meeting I attended uh, in October 2008. And here, come back to Singapore, we have, we have our own internal uh, the two group, IT and the BCM side. And we go there and present. So at the end, three of us, I'm one of the co-editor together with Philip C. We launched the 27031. This is ICT readiness for BC. And this is standard now is being re revised, okay? revised. And beside this, you go into another level, the world level on the 22301. And we launched this. And during the time, you can see these are the committee members. I always thank my committee members and also the resource member for their contribution. And they, they share their view on what is the better way you know, to do things. To get also during the time, one of the resource members. And we have our own meeting. Uh, and this is the, the, the meeting in Beijing. Uh, so, Finish the one, 2012 published, now it's 2019. Uh, 2019, uh, one of the meeting was in Norway, this is a plenary meeting. And next one, it go down to WG2, go down to the project team. And this is, was very challenging because they are going to make changes to the 2020 version. And you can see that the project team leader, anything you want to change, they, you need about two thirds of those who are present you know, in the meeting. So it's not easy for Singapore rep to defend, to ask not to change this. Uh, that is the challenges we do. That in the time of the CD uh, the meeting. So finally, came out. And now we're using the Singapore standards. That's why we put in 2020. And this, this, uh, this center is available uh, in Singapore. So what is BCM? 
This definition of BCM, it looks only one sentence. Process of implementing and maintaining business continuity. You know how difficult for me to fight for this. You look at this slide. 22301, take out this definition. But 22313, during the guided meeting, I strongly objected that we remove the term BCM because Singapore have a national BCM program, we have BCM pandemic program, all this. How can you remove a term which I've been using for how many years? So I thank the, the project team leaders uh, and we accepted this. So it came back. There's only one new definition that appeared in 22313, that's BCM. Okay. So now this BCM term we can use again. <laughs> now take a look. What have you learned? What have you learned from the, the Spanish flu 1918? You look at the curve. Uh, the first wave after that, you go up to the second wave. And the second wave is what the kill tens of millions dead uh, during that time. And today, if you look at the world, you look at this. As a 6th January 2002, a few days ago, in America, one day, uh, new confirmed cases. 0.25 million. Look at the curve. Is it similar to the two, the uh, COVID 19, uh, the 21918 curve? And look at the death. Uh, one day, 3,008. The day came out to 4,000. So, a lot of things we need to do to prepare for this to come. So, if we prepare, what shall we do? Thing go wrong, we do the response. So, your emergency management team, you got all the safe distancing, the government will come out, stay home, notice, travel, thing, thing, things like this. And BCM system, we emphasize life safety is the first priority during incident response. It is a power failure. It's not because, hey, 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 when can we get the power back? It's life safety. Anybody injured, that's a top priority. That is the most important thing we need to respond. Let's do something before it happens. So we have to do risk assessment. I, BIA, we talk about training, exercise. So we prepare so that we know how to respond to this. And the whole thing, up to recovery, there's a BCM system. This is the same work. And that is the reason why all this will be inside the 2231, 301, and 313. When I read this Sing Ming uh, paper in 31st June 2020, our Prime Minister mentioned about the last 17 years we're preparing for this. Why? Why are we working so hard for this? For what purpose? Uh, because you know that, you know, we learn from from SARS and all this, so you need to do something. So you see, look at it. Hmm? 17, 2003 at the time, because of SARS, we should prepare, we prepare the infrastructure, we prepare the response strategy, we have to stock out whatever you need to do, training, including all the things happen. Because we know one day similar thing will happen. So this time, as far as we are concerned, we have done a better job. Although we have a very low fatality rate, we know there are areas we can improve further, and we all know which area. Uh, there are certain areas we can improve further. So, for this particular 22301, you take a look on what is inside there. First, these are the content. Uh, I call it 1, 2, 3, call it chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Okay? Then you go down to pay attention to chapter 8, operation. Then you go down all the way. You can see the very detailed, you go down, break down, and until the last one. So we use a PDCA, plan, do, check, action. Remember, 22301 is a management system. It's unlike, unlike the 31,000. Huh? This is a management system. And here, you will go down, plan. You do chapter 4, 5, 6, 7. Do is the operation. Then you check performance evaluation. Finally, it's improvement. We believe even you are the best in the world, always ask yourself, can we improve further? So this is a PDCA cycle. And here to share with you the difference between the 2012 and 2019 version. 2012, we, we put all the definition. We have a lot of things we add in. Yeah? For example, BCM, NBCO, and all this in the 2012. Now 2019, they take out this. It's not they take it away, but they put all this in another document called 22300. Yeah? Uh, this is all the vocabulary. So you have to buy two, two standards in order to find the definition of this, this, and that. So a lot of things will be removed and also they add in new one to come in, okay? So chapter four is talking about, do you know organization? You know what organization you are doing? 
do you know who are the interested party you know, and the legal and all these requirements? So these are the these are the chapter four. And chapter five, we talk about leadership. You need a strong leader to do this. So leadership is here. And also the policy, the rule, who does what in the chapter five. Chapter six, you taking your planning side. You need to plan what is a BC objective. Uh, and also things like this, changes to this, what do you do? Uh, especially when your, your top management change, obviously the culture may change after a few years. Then support, you need resources, you need competence, you need awareness. Do you know how to find this, your communication? So competence is important. And what competent a person we talk about? Training, very important besides educational level. So how to get competent? Training, that's the side train, emphasize training, very important here. Mentoring, or you cannot, please hire a consultant to help you uh, to do this. So there are some training available, uh, like this in training in some organization, in emergency management, BCM, I emphasize the importance of crisis intervention. Crisis intervention is when something goes wrong, how do you break bad news to the, to the family? Uh, you don't think that that one is John, you call John. It may, it may be called the wrong John, you know. Then after the die, the wife died of heart attack, then how? Then realize, oh, 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 and I don't know how, know how to do this. So there's a training important. Crisis intervention courses available, organized by uh, Changi General Hospital. Then we have ITBCM, uh, organized by SES. Please take a look at some of these. Now we talk about chapter eight, operation. This operation is the most important chapter uh, in this. And you can see that BIA or this. So for 2019 or Singapore Standard 2020, they add in a new one. That's evaluation. I will share with this later. And first one, operating and planning and control. You talk about you need to plan something uh, before you go into doing this. So yeah. And BCMS emphasize, please keep documented information. You need all these things, who agree with this, agree, put it down there. And they make sure all these outsource processes and supply chain are controlled. It may look very simple, and sometimes one word out there. Please understand the definition and the impact. If you don't do it, what will happen? Because 2301 is a requirements uh, standards. Okay, let's do about BIA and RA. Which one is, which one you think is, is critical? What is BIA? BIA asks you, what are the activities that support the production of, of this? Next one, if something goes wrong, so what? Is it time important? If yes, then what are the prioritized time frame? When must you get this one back and up to what level? And next one, you talk about dependency. Do you require people to give you all the thing, power, for example? And also, what are the supporting resources you need? So. They emphasize a lot. Do you know your, your supplier or outsource but can do the job now when you need them? Okay. So last time in the SS540, we have all the critical CBF, critical business function. Uh, the 2201, it talk about prioritized activities. The meaning is the same, except they use different terms. Okay. So if activities, for example, there are so many activities in your organization. You through the BIA, you know, oh, some of them are prioritized activities. I give you an example. You may, you may take out your finger, your hand, and they say now terrorists catch you. You want to chop the one of the finger. Do you know which one? You got no choice but to let me chop. Can I do an impact analysis to find out which one we're willing to go? Uh, then you know, oh, oh, each finger, the thumb got a different function, activity, different function. Then you will decide which one. Uh, for me, because I'm, I'm, I've been spending so much time on the NS and all this, we know that uh, the second last finger, I, today, I didn't even put on ring, the one that I can sacrifice. Uh, so for example, I will chop away the one. Uh, then from the, you know the PA, then you do the risk assessment. So later we will cover this, okay? And this is the interested party. Please take a look when you have 313. Detail who are the people in here that affect you. Government, uh, for example. Uh, and other thing, emergency response, who? Then within the organization, the top management, for example and all the things now, the incident response personnel. You take a look on this and ask yourself, how, how confident you are when, when you went to do preparation, they are there to help you. When you need their help, they need respond. Can they do it or not? Within the time given. And when you go to risk management, this, this is 31,000. This is not the old one, this is a new one, the 201 day. 
you will see that the risk assessment is there. And up, go into risk assessment, the most important steps is identify risk. If you fail to identify the risk, please don't waste your time doing your risk analysis and all these things because you miss the target. So risk identification is very important. That's why when you are new to BSM system, you need expert to come in to look at look, take a look on your what your companies are doing and share with you what can go wrong. Okay, then you do treatment and things like this. So this is one example. If you refer to 31010, then inside this, this new another standard will share with you at least 30 methods to do risk assessment. And many companies using the likelihood and consequence. Okay. X and Y exist. And if you go into the go into this place, you know that oh, this is high likelihood, high consequence. Uh, you go to the website, you'll find all sorts of examples down there. Okay. So after this, you go into your strategy. You'll find a strategy, you need to do something or need to do something. So how do you identify your strategy? You look at all the power type activity. How can we reduce the likelihood? Can we shorten the period of disruption? And things like this. And also, we make sure that we have the resources. Otherwise, you will have a plan, you do nothing. Next one, after you have so many possibilities, then select which one you need to do. Always remember, in a BCMS, we emphasize a lot of time. By when can you get this thing back? And also the agreed capacity. Okay, then the risk and also how much. It may be many good solutions, but cost is so much. Do you want to, you think the top management will support this? But if they don't support this, remember, record down in the minutes of meeting nah, that no action taken. Nah, no action taken. Okay? Minute it down. So maybe one year later, then consider. Then your strategy, then you go into plan to do who does what, what shall we do? You just respond plan. Okay? So how do we minimize this? And remember, in the response team, it, you must ask them the roles and responsibility. Uh, that's a mini three, you call it grouping and task. This group, the, that's what and responsibility. So each plan go in detail. You have to tell them the detail. What is supposed to do? When to recover things within the time? And what is the threshold? When can you deliver the product at a great capacity? And don't forget one thing. Take care of the health of your people and also the public. There's a welfare individual important and also prevent loss and viability and also impact on the environment. You cannot save your company at the same time you destroy the world. Huh? So this. So after you have this, so what? Those are plans. So you need to do training, you do exercise, and there are exercises. You must remember yeah, these are the, in the 22301 uh, telling you what you're supposed to do. Your aim, your time, and things like this. So example exercises like start recall, table talk, functional deployment. Huh? So depend on, on how uh, mature your organization is, you go further and further. So there are many, many exercises an organization need to do. Uh, so next one, evaluation. Remember, this is a new chapter, a new sub-chapter. And here, it's telling you that when you do this, please, you do evaluation. Suitability, adequacy, effectiveness of BIA. Uh, make sure that you think that all these things, after all this, will come out. Yes. And you learn through your exercise, what are the things we can improve? Post-incident report, anything we need to do or not. And don't forget, don't forget. Conduct evaluation of the BC capability of relevant partners and suppliers. In today, I depend so much on my partner supplier. I want to make sure that they also have the BC capability. And that's why in Singapore, you find a certain agency will ask you, can you show, you, show me your BC plan and your supplier? So this, this also involves a lot of training required, things like this. Then you talk about legal regulatory requirements. Do you know what happened if COVID-19 come that we have so many things that come out new? Uh, so now it's 2021. What about end, six months later? Is there any new thing that come up? We do not know. So you have to go look at this. And what about industrial best practices? Besides Singapore, can we learn from other countries like China? How do we respond, prepare for, for all the things? There are other countries that can learn. Eh? There are other things we can learn. That's why in the BCM working group, we can always learn with other ISO people to learn from them. You know? And remember, we need to update timely, this in a timely matter. If you do not update your plan, in, and the plan is outdated, can throw away. Okay, so be careful. When after the incident happened, take out the take out the plan and take a look, or any significant changes occur, reorganization, whatever you need to do. So 
after all this will be your performance evaluation uh, you take a look and don't forget audit your internal auditor is need to do their job to see whether it, any improvement you do or not and the last one is continue improvement okay and you look at others so because of time given i can do a very quick introduction Con conclusion if you need to update the 22301 this is the only chance you can do it free and right? you go into the ESG website is a free standard. Now, besides 2231, you got other emergency response plan, those related to, to medical services, things like this. So this is a contribution from Singapore Standard Council. Right? In the whole world, there are other standards also available by right? Singapore. This please take the opportunity to download now. If not, you have to pay for it. And for the working group on BCM, we some of us have to supporting the ESG uh, since the third day of Lunar New Year last year. 27 January 2020, 2020 yeah, we, um, we updated the guide on BC planning on this. So this one, you can you want to take a look. And good news is the TC292, beside the two standards we are talking about, they also other standards are produced. For example, they, have, they want to know how to do BIA, you refer to 2231. You want to know how to do strategy, you take a look at 231. Exercises, you can do with the emergency management side. Yeah? There are many others. And there are also new one coming. For example, tonight, after this meeting, 9 o'clock, I have to attend the ISO meeting on the revision on the BIA. So these are the contributions. You know, we hope Singapore can benefit from this. So office law, I always believe in this. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. It cannot be one factor. But with two factors that coexist, you better be careful. So what shall we do? Us, are we operationally ready? Because assumption is serious, serious incident can happen anytime. Uh, are you prepared? Are you prepared that it could be a terrorist attack anytime in Singapore? Uh, we have been preparing for many, many years. Yeah? If yes, that means you have a plan, you have to do it, prepare preparation. To us, we introduce this standard called BCM system. This may not be the best standard. Up to today, this standard is available. And our aim is to build a strong and sustainable BC culture. And that is the one I'm referring to, 2301-2020. And also the 22313 is a guide to help us. So please take a look on this standard. And if you need further qualification, support, assistance, please con contact uh, SES so we all can support you further. And with this, I say thank you very much for your attention and wish you all good health and good luck. May I hand over to uh, you get. Mika, can I start? Mika? Yes, please go ahead, Duket. Thanks. Okay, um, good afternoon to everybody. Okay, um, my name is Wong Duket. I'm actually the uh, chairman for the Data Center chapter. Okay, now I understand also there are many of you uh, data center professionals uh, in this uh, webinar. So it's good. So uh, I think I also saw my good friend Joshua, who is also inside. Thank you so much for supporting this event. Now, I am also a BCP professional. Now, I do a lot of the risk assessment uh, when I do BCM consultancy. One of the areas I look at is about data center, which um, I am very concerned whenever I do risk assessment in data center. Okay, because I think uh, we all know that if anything wrong with data center, we are literally, everything will stop. Okay, especially now we rely so much on like the grab, uh, the food, and all this relying on data center, requiring on systems. Imagine, if, let's say data center, I call it a heartbeat. If it's affected, there's no way we can do a grab for our transportation. There's no way we can grab our food and so on, especially in COVID-19. And actually in COVID-19, data center play a very, very important role. We all know. We all know that if it goes down, a lot of the supply chain food will not be able to help us, especially when we work at home. Therefore, I want to share a lot about the, the importance of the data center and IT on how it should be integrated into the BCM to get, make it more holistic. Okay, uh, disclaimer. So basically this presentation that is only served as my personal opinion. 
and this is my agenda all right now uh, i think i will not share too much but basically i think important about to know me is that i do the business continuity for the last 30 years i've been involved in the pandemic preparedness so over the many years i have actually had many organizations uh, set up the pandemic which i'm glad that most of us are quite well protected i also do on data center and i actually brought data center risk assessment into bcm which i'm going to share a lot with you especially for the data center professional who are in this web you know, right now you know um look at this uh i'm not sure whether you know that singapore even though we're a small island we have almost 50 data centers in singapore okay it's just a small island now you can imagine if the like what mr ong mentioned if we have any outages a power outages island wide just like what we saw in pakistan i think now recently the country actually actually go black up so we are need to make sure that this data center that's supporting all our critical services to make sure all the essential services continue are very important actually i also look at it you look at our data center professional people we are very much trained about infrastructure management operation management i want to introduce something called data center risk management how many of us actually done risk assessment assessment about data center can we make sure our data center are always constantly and sustainable as a part of business continuity so we ask ourselves what have we done to make sure our data center had done the risk analysis and so on so that's the important part all right now let's look at the changing landscape and also bcn now we can see that in the early 1790s we don't have this thing called data center we just start with server room computer room or if you're of my age you'll know that it was called edp room electronic data processing room you can see on the pictures we are running on mainframe and so on so we are using it system back end to tapes and so on so it's just a computer system to enable our the way businesses are run but as we move towards to the 1990s 2000 we actually go into the private and internet data centers yeah at the time we don't really have much of the clock computing okay but it's getting important to make sure that our data are being protected and continue but not here beyond the 2000s and where we start to have the cloud computing we thought about all the uh, advanced robotic digitization automations and so on internet of things and so on and we realized that we are dependent on digital so much and you look at the digitization you can see that because of covid 19 the digitization had ramped up so fast especially in the food industry that's where we can get food easily now you know through ordering and so on, through online and even like forcing a lot of the, the uh, food the industry like the hawkers even go digitization and so on so you can imagine the data center is becoming so critical basically this is the landscape what i can share is that data center are always so important again i will ask ourselves how many of us actually do data center risk assessment now this is important because when i do the uh, bcm when i do risk assessment in data center when i go to the organization and say hey let's do a data center risk assessment sometimes you realize that the data center people they may not be they may not be trained and they will ask hey uh what to look out for uh? how do i know whether my data center there are risks and so on so that i say the data center can be very good in infrastructure management the maintenance and they're good in operation management but we may not be good in risk management which we can actually bring it as part of the bcm now you can see that this is what we uh need a data center especially the 50 over data center we have we have the big data we have also concern about cybersecurity, internet of things all right crowd computing robotics all right now e-commerce businesses and so on system integration so we really need the it so much so imagine if it is down data center is down okay the our life will get disturbed tremendously now here you can see the the it is no longer just a supporting role you know last time many years back when it died never mind like we can have a cup of coffee and recover the it slowly but this is no longer what we want when we look at the it as it advanced the the way we run the business it is no longer a support function you must understand it's no longer a support function but it become a key enabler 
to us when we look about business strategies how do we reach out to making making the market demands and needs and so on so i believe all of us every now and then we look at handphone every now and then we look at shopee la lazada la grab la and so on that is what we need so basically next sir, the technology is actually making the industry so possible that we are leverage so much on data new data that are being connected with internet of things and so on and that's where we get the end-to-end -end information stream across the value chain and we realize that these are becoming new services and business model right at the end businesses with this innovation twist uh, the innovation and transformation of business model and processes and that's how we can actually get profitable reduce the cost enhance customer experience and so on you know, even my family right now, we don't really go to retail. We actually can order food. We can order whatever we want is online. And as we are staying more at home right now because of COVID-19. All right. Now, you look at this thing right now is that what is so important about data center? We talk about business continuity. We understand from Leong Chuan. You look at it right now. If we do not manage our data center well, okay, it's a thumb bomb. The clock will click and so on. And we do not know what will happen to our data center. That's why we always have this plan about business continuity. So it's in case our server room is down or office space down, we have this resiliency to fear over. Now, what I want to take note is that all this while when we do business continuity planning, you realize that all time is always planning when something happened, how we fear over. Have we ever considered, can we don't allow it to fear? We cannot afford to fear. We need to do something. We need to do risk assessment. We need to have this thing called pre-incident strategy. We need to regulate another the risk and maintain it and sustain it. We don't want it to fear. Can we do that? So we don't want a lot it to fear over unless it's really thing that we cannot afford to fear. All right. So you can see that even in the 1980s, you realize that our RTO is like 24 hours. You know, when something goes wrong, well, we can say that we can take 24 hours or more to recover. And the RPO is like more than 24 hours. That's why we're adding backup to tapes. We don't have the send to send storage. We rely on backup tapes. But that doesn't stay. So you realize that we move from computer recovery to business continuity, or you call it resiliency. So in fact, the uh, 911 and the um, in 201 as well as the 203 South has changed the whole landscape of business continuity. IT data center becomes so important. That's where we see that the critical business district, when you look at the risk, they have actually decentralized it. Okay, decentralized into different uh, business area, business park and so on. And to, in order to overcome like pandemic and also like, you know, when fire or terrorist attack, that's where we also had a split team. And we, had this, we also rely a lot on the real-time replication on cloud and cloud infrastructure and so on in order to continue business. I believe all of us during COVID-19, we have benefited from what has been done when this uh, 911 and SARS happened. That's why when COVID happened, we are able to decentralize it. In fact, I remember I had this uh, talk together with Joshua. Uh, we talked about, A, during COVID-19, how can we make sure that the data center are able to sustain? Why I say that? Because we also rely a lot on the uh, Malaysian workers, whatever. They are the data center maintaining team. Are we still constantly maintaining our data center during the COVID-19? Are they the essential services? How can we make sure that when anything goes wrong, especially supply chain, with the parts, the people that make sure that these data center are constantly maintained and to his efficiencies? And that was a worry. I remember I had that with Joshua now. Now, next we look at it is that the previously, if you look at the last chart, we are more concentrating on when something wrong with our IT system, the risk, but that, in fact, this is actually something that we are still doing it, looking at what may affect our IT system that may affect our critical services. Actually, we have to move beyond to the big diagram on, the, on my right side, on your right side right now. It's not about just the IT system. The IT system that services us are sitting on critical infrastructure like data center. So from the word data center, are we able to analyze what are the risks that may affect data center? It can be power, it can be cooling, it can be your even your network communication is down. It can also be your UPS, 
generator. Now, personally, I have gone into a lot of nightmares. Uh, I run data center for 20 years. I seen UPS batteries exploded when the when we have a power failure, sync power switch over to the UPS, and the UPS are more or less like over expired, not sufficient voltage, and it actually cause a fire. I have seen a uh, switch room blasted into fire because of well, we may not have done thermal scan to look out for hotspots, and the hotspot are getting into higher and higher temperature, and it actually eventually triggers the fire. I seen that. So I can imagine if I don't do all these risk mitigation plan, if anything happened to the data center, can you recover within four hours or whatever? Now it may take you months to recover. And this is not something you want to see. Now, beside data center, of course, you also look into look, the building environment, the fire protection system, the flood, the ME, and so on. And then even fire protection system, what us, especially the data center professional here and the BCM professional. How many of you actually gone into the fire control center to take a look whether my fire panel alarm, there's no fault? Have you ever looked into the gas suppression system? Is it on a bypass mode? That many. I even look at the oxygen tank that they have in the fire control center. It have actually expired 10 years ago. It's not maintained. So you can ask yourself, it's just a fire control center if you don't manage well. How can we ensure data center can be sustainable? So basically, these are the risks that we need to look at. Now, I can see the risks over here. Now, like what Leong Chuan mentioned, BCM is about risk. So that's why I mentioned about data center risk management. Now, you look at the hotspot. To be frank, when I do a lot of the BCM, this is something where I'm worried because when I ask some of the um, server room, uh, the people who are in charge of the server or data center, uh, have they ever done thermal scan? Surprisingly, not many of them knows. And some of them actually ask me, what is thermal scan? And that's what the worry part. You can see the, from the pictures over here, if you don't do thermal scan, some of the electrical board may have leakage and it comes in the hotspot and it goes into high temperature and eventually it triggers the fire. So we ask ourselves, is this what we're going to see? Now, if this happened in our data center, you can imagine it may spark a fire. What is going to happen next? We all know. B, 40 main fire panel alarm. I, I was actually quite shocked uh, when I do risk analysis in a few buildings. Uh, I had this thought. You can see in the fire alarm, uh, there are alarms over there, but it had not been rectified. It can be for months or for years. I ever came across uh, a, a company that the fire panel alarm, there's no power. They actually unplug the power socket and connect to something else, and nobody knows. So you can imagine, if let's say there's a fire right now, the main fire panel alarm will not be working. Nobody will know there's a fire. Likewise for the maintenance, how do we know that the smoke detector, jet detection system, fire protection system are good? Who have actually done the risk analysis looking at that? Okay, so we... We really need to consider now. I, I ever went into the generator room. Okay, I happened to see in the generator the diesel tank was in left with 30%. Nobody knows. And my this customer actually tell me, oh, this Sunday we are doing a high tension servicing. So I said, Oh no, how long can your generator last with only 30% diesel? It won't last. So literally, you during the high tension servicing, uh, there might be a possibility that the generator diesel will run low and we just power shut down by itself. So again, this is something that we need to look at. The important part, the, or I would say the more dangerous part is actually, I will ask about UPA batteries. I'm not sure, we all know that UPA battery lifespan is only five years. Do we know the impact, if let's say there's a power outage, the power is gonna switch over to UPS, and if your UPS are fire already expired, and there's no, uh, the, um, what I call that, the test, the, what I call impedance test to test the voltage of the batteries. If the batteries are low voltage, do you know what's the impact? With the inrush current coming in from the sink power, switching to the UPA, it may just cause an explosion. That's the worry part about battery. So again, we ask ourselves, how many of us actually go into that to look at our battery system, including capacitors and so on? Of course, the rest are like E and F. It's about do we have competent and trained 
cert team that is a company emergency response team to make sure that we are able to do correct evacuation to save the life of the people and so on. So therefore, I will say that the good maintenance of the data center or risk management of data center, we need to have professional, competent people. And I know that many organizations, pardon me, is that a lot of facility people are doing ticking exercise. Basically, they just take the checklist to go and just tick, 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 everything is okay. But we have not really gone into and I'm not at risk very thoroughly. Okay, let me just quickly run through. Okay, I know my time is up. Now, basically, the why coming up about BCM here and Long Chan mentioned about risk. Now, it is important for us because since data center and IT are so crucial, we need to have a risk mitigation plan. I call it pre incident strategy, it means I really need to do a risk analysis to understand which part of the critical infrastructure or the data center that may affect me. If this will affect me, I need to really do very regular maintenance, like the fire protection system, the UPS, the generators, and so on. We need to control it and make sure that there's no fault with it. In fact, I, 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 I got this habit when I was running the data center. Um, every two, three months, I would just go down to the data center and tell my DC managers to go for a walk. Every time I say that, he gets worried because the walk is actually to walk around to physically to view for any kind of potential risks and threats. And that's where the incident strategy will come in to help us. If this thing really happened, how do we move to the alternate side? Therefore, that's why I mentioned about data center risk management. We really need to identify the impact to mitigate any possible risks that may affect the data center, the IT system so that our BCA can be in place. BCA is not just looking at cybersecurity, looking at fire, looking at flood. Nope. We need to include data center right now. We need to look at fire, flood, power detection system, fire detection, protection, IT infrastructure. Okay, that's where the more we analyze the risk, the more we do physical side assessment, then we are able to know where are the risks, we are able to respond and so on. Therefore, if we have a competent BCN team, not just on BCN, not just on fire, we also have the data center risk management team inside the BCM team that can actually help us to analyze where are the risks to bring this as I call it a more holistic BCM. So what are the benefits? So you can see that as we do the risk assessment, we had the pre instant strategies to make sure all our facilities, be it IT, be it fire protection system, be it data centers, if we are able to analyze the risk, mitigate the risk, with regular maintenance and so on, by the competent BCM response team, then I can tell you we are in a safe hand, all right? So therefore, it's important, BCM is no longer just a BCM team, IT team, data center team, BCM team, where they used to be very disintegrated. They work very silo. Therefore, I would think that it's important right now that to be, have more holistic BCM, we need all these people to be integrated together to understand each other's risks, to have a more sustainable BCM. So the benefit really, while we have a very secure data center, that's the root cause. If a data center fear, everything fear. So we rely on data center, security, IT system, and so on, so that we can actually move toward digitization and organization resilience, uptime, sustainability for our infrastructure and services. As we move on to a lot of the um, data, digital government services, security services, e-banking especially, we rely so much on e-banking today, mobile application today. I can tell you now, I hardly bring any cash out because I know I can use PayWave, I can use so many payment systems. So imagine if all these systems fail, when you go out to use all these systems, you can't use it anymore. So we have to put all these things into a more secure, resilient, reliable critical infrastructure and network connectivity to have a more sustainable PCM. I had the same thing with Longtron, expect the unexpected. Anything that go wrong will go wrong. If you don't prepare, if we prepare, if we fear to prepare, if we fear to do our risk assessment regularly, I think we're preparing to fear. So I will emphasize again, please include beside data center, set DC infrastructure management, DC operation management, we should also include data center risk management. Okay, so so that we don't scale of um, pu pa yi wan, si pa wan yi. 
Thank you, Vidis. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. I'm going to pass it back to Mika. Mika, I'll talk to you. Okay, hi. Thanks, Duket. Sorry, I had a little trouble unmuting myself. Thanks, Duket. I and thought I lost friend. myself, so how comes nobody talking? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll pass back to you, Nika. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Duket. Thanks, Liang Chuan. So, um, I, right now, we'll proceed on to the Q&A uh, portion of today's program. Um, basically, uh, at, from admin perspective, right, what we what we want to do is, you know, if any of the attendees have a question, you can type it in the Zoom, uh, the chat window. So towards the bottom of your Zoom screen, you see uh, like a chat um, uh, command or icon. You can click on that and then you can actually direct your question either to a, a particular panelist or if you don't have any uh, panelists in mind, you can just, you know, just type in your question. Uh, then I'll try, as a moderator, I'll try to consolidate those uh, questions. And then, uh, you know, based on my, um, I, I guess, my guess, I will direct it to the correct uh, panelists. But of course, by all means, uh, if I direct the, a question to Tuket, for example, and if Leong Chuan or Benjamin has something to add on, uh, please you know, do do uh, continue to share your thoughts. I think that's the whole purpose of this session, for everyone to share your experiences so that we can learn uh, from each other. Okay, so uh, rather than waiting for any questions, let me first start off with the first question, and then I'll, I'll look at other questions that may come in along the way. Okay, so the first question is... Uh, uh, I will direct it to the first our first speaker, Leong Chuan. Right, uh, implementing BCM and disaster recovery right, DR can be costly affairs. Right? So as the Singapore government has been strong supporters of these areas, can you share with us you know, what sort of government fundings are available to both either the individuals, right, those who want to up, upgrade their skill, upskill themselves in BCMDR, as well as to organizations uh, as to further improve their resilience in BCM as well as uh, ITDR. So, Leong Chuan, can you share your thoughts on that, please? Uh, Leong Chuan, you are on mute. I cannot hear you. <laughs> Leong Chuan, I'm mute. Okay. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, understand for government agency that if an organization want to implement BCM system, for example, 22301, then they can approach an organization called Enterprise Singapore. You go to Enterprise Singapore, the website called Standards Adoption, Standard Adoption, then it will give you some example of some guideline on what are the standards, you know, example of standard that is available. But a lot of time you go in, they, they, they have to, you have to ask them about the detail, what the standard you are adopting. So the final decision, whether you get the funding up to how many percent is additional yes, Enterprise Singapore. Then second source I was understand is from the Singapore government agency website called Business Grant Portals, uh, BGP. You want me to just go in BGP and take a look on this. These are the two possible uh, funding areas and for training some people say hey we need to go send people for training so one one of the agency that is con mm. currently doing this training even over the last many many years is a uh, singapore business federation and if you are the members of sbf you go for this training they will give you a discounted rate and even sometimes they have about i said member about 500 dollars per year you know for people that conduct training the other thing about the training linked to IT is our IT BCM training, which is uh, available and organized by SES. I think SES, you all can uh, share more. So besides that, they offer their other training uh, companies. You know, they provide training at like Singapore Institute, uh, Power and Gas, and et cetera, other, others. So this is currently what I understand, that what are the training available. But, but the question now is we hope, we hope to hear more good news next month when the government uh, 
the new budget come up, maybe they encourage us, you know, more organization to go for all these standard adoption. Thank you, Mita. All right, thanks. Thanks, uh, Liang Chuan. Uh, yeah, so we hope, hope we'll have more good news uh, uh, from finance minister uh, huh, next month when he shares the, the budget uh, so that we all can tap on, on that. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll just move on uh, to another question. Um, okay, this one, perhaps I'll, I'll direct it to uh, Benjamin, right? Because Benjamin, I think from an end user perspective, we like to uh, gather his thoughts as well. So uh, Benjamin, right, there are a number of ISO standards that touches on DCM or DCP, right? So for example, ISO uh, 20,000, 27,001, 31,000 and so on. So as an organization, right, from, from an organization perspective, uh, which standard, I guess, in, in your mind, do you think is, uh, is more relevant uh, for you? Uh, and Or do you feel that no organizations actually should go for <laughs> certification, if you like? for all these uh, ISO standards. So can you share your thoughts on that, uh, Benjamin? Yeah, thanks, Mika. Okay, for the three standards that Mika has mentioned, each standard actually has its own definition, its objective and its requirement. So we really need to know what we are looking for when we are talking about certification because certification comes with quite a huge number of effort, resources, that is required and it's not a one-time effort. You need to keep it ongoing years after years to renew the certification. ISO 20,000 focus on service management, 27,000 focus on security management, 31,000 focus on risk management. Now BCP is crucial in every area in business, be it in security because where you need to handle where situation when the data center is compromised. You need to talk about the risk assessment of data centers when we are evaluating the risk of continuity as well as the service level consideration. So each of these standards actually has embedded some basic requirements for BCP. But on the other hand, ISO 22301 gives its fully focus on business continuity by itself. So it depends, as what I mentioned earlier, on the organization objective. For example, if an organization is a service provider, probably ISO 20,000. But if an organization is providing service such as hosting of uh, servers, etc., or providing cloud services, probably 22301, Will, be, will need to be considered. Okay, I also want to, I saw one question from Joshua, which is also pertaining to this. Is there anything in particular to watch out for in terms of BCM if it's also going for ISO 27,000 certification? So as what I mentioned, 27,000 is focusing on security. And in terms of security, availability, if you, Noted the three things in security, the CIA, availability is one of the factor. And when you talk about availability, BCM come into the picture. So definitely BCM is a consideration if we were to look at the 27,000 certification. Uh, thanks, uh, Leong Chuan, you want anything you want to add? Uh, for, for me, there's a reason why in uh, two, uh, many years ago, we jointly introduced the 27031, you know, the, the ICT readiness for this. But maybe we wait for the, the, the you can take a look at the, the old existing model. And the new one that being reviewed is on, on the 27031. We hope by end of this year, early next year, you can see more, more standard that can support the organization on all this IT and communication concern. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Benjamin Leong Chuan. Um, picking up a question from the chat, right? I think this one I will direct it, I guess, to you get uh, to, to start off. And maybe after that, Leong Chuan can also add on. Uh, is the SS507 going to be aligned 
with the local and the ISO standard that we just went through. So you get, can, uh, can you take that? Okay, uh, can you hear me? I'm, okay. You know, uh, the the last uh, revision of the SSR7 was 2015. Uh, we have not heard anything from IMDA or whoever to see whether there's any making any changes or not. Okay, but the take note that SS file seven is more for to certify DRBCP service provider, so it's not about risk management. Okay, so if you are doing the BCM, I would suggest that you look at the three one zero 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 on the risk assessment. Okay, on how to do risk analysis in data centers. Okay, so the I would say that the SS file seven there are a lot of the mention about what are the infrastructure. I think we can use that to pull up. Well, how do we identify what are the critical infrastructure in a data center that warn us that we need to do risk assessment? So I would say that we should link the SS-407 with the ISO 3100 so that we actually do the pre-incident strategy correctly in the ISO 22301. Okay. Um, Leong Chan, you want to add on anything? Any uh, sort of like thing that is brewing that you heard about? SS-507. <laughs> what I can share with uh, participants and the panel list is, if you understand, just talk about ISO. Even six months or nine months ago, you know how many standards have been published? It's more than 27,000 standards. So if you go inside, the best to do is you go and find exactly what you were referring to. And normally, normally, even an organization, you may need more than one standards or management system to, to assist you. So please be very specific, understand what is your service area, what are your what is your organization doing? And if sometimes you go into you just go into Google and go and find what standard can suit you, you find that there's some recommendation. But whatever thing you see from from this information come out, just note that please do not just believe fully and think that that is the final solution. Okay. I think if we can come back even the SCS is a good place for us to discuss. We can discuss some of this uh, further. And especially if a new standard being developed, but it normally takes about two years uh, to come up with, with a new standard. Then we can share and get your uh, information earlier. Thanks. All right. Uh, quick one, Amiga, uh, yep. just to go back to SS-407. Uh, uh, I saw a message here. Does this mean SS-407 is going to be, I think, depreciated? Uh, nope, it's going to stay. Uh, this is actually to allow all the DRBCB service provider to, to service provider to make sure that their data center infrastructure and operation management and all the processes are in place, and also to make sure that data center are well maintained in order to be a certified DRBCB service provider. So for those who want to do risk analysis and how to start on data center, I think you can actually get hold of the SS file seven, which is very good documentation. Use this as a guide to start off with the uh, risk assessment. Yeah, back to you, uh, Mika. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. Okay, uh, I'd like just to pick on two, uh, pick up two, two questions here, which I'll try to answer. One is, can we have a copy of the ISO standard that is presented? Uh, and unfortunately, no. Uh, the reason why is because the, the standards are actually controlled documents. Uh, so if you like, you know, uh, your organization can purchase the standard. But one thing to share with you, right, um, what Leong Chuan shared earlier, if, if you had noticed, is actually the SS ISO 22301-2020 standard. Uh, there is a SS in front which stands for Singapore standard. Um, so the SS ISO 22301 actually follows, it's almost identical, I, I would say, 99.9% .9 identical to the ISO standard. Uh, so word for word in terms of guidance and all those, I think the SS, uh, SS standard is uh, equivalent, let's put it that way. However, the price is totally different. <laughs> it's a world of difference. So if you buy from the ISO store, it, it will cost a lot more than if you buy the SS, uh, the SS version of the same standard. Yeah, so it's about three hundred dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> so for given the current climate of cost cutting, I think for organizations or even for individuals, if you are looking for if you are looking to purchase the standard, uh, do do go down to the I mean do go and look for the SS 
version of the 22301 uh, and then you can buy it i think it's something like i think 30 over dollars if i'm not wrong right it's, it's it's less than 50 dollars for for one standard and that that can last you for you know i, I guess for quite a few years right so uh, and when you purchase the standard it can be a hard copy or soft copy so nowadays a lot of people uh, will, buy, will buy the soft copy and if you purchase the soft copy you notice that it is actually uh, watermarked with your organization and who is the purchaser so that is their way of controlling uh, if you like the, the the document so that's what i mean by uh, the the documents are actually tightly controlled even when people uh, purchase the, the standards okay amit uh, may i, I... Sure. Uh, if you are talking about SS, ISO, and ISO 22301, in terms of all the technical details, we call it identical adoption, 100% same. We cannot even change one word. But Singapore standard will add in a few more pages to introduce who are the people involved to support this, to develop this. So that's, a, that's a, the main thing different. But currently, if you just want to know exactly what's inside the technical area on the, the 22301, you can download it free of charge. And don't miss it now. You go into the Enterprise Singapore website. Just now I show you the Singapore Enterprise website. You go in there, you will see on the COVID-19, you know, the, some of the standards that we can use for organization. And this is... Uh, this is Singapore Standard Council, currently the contribution to Singapore organization. So please go inside, go into Enterprise Singapore website and download this 22301.2019. ISO site is 2019. Singapore Standard is 2020 because it takes a few months for us to, 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 to finalize become the Singapore Standard. So don't miss the opportunity. Currently, it's free of charge. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Leong Chan. Yeah, uh, so the, the website Leong Chan shared earlier uh, on, on the, in this slide, right, the, Sing the Enterprise Singapore website, they have it. So that is the current uh, contribution, if you like. Okay. Um, so maybe let me move on to uh, another question. Um, this one, I will probably channel this to uh, Tuket, right, uh, because this is more related to DC. So uh, I, I think from, from your experience, uh, I guess you get both from running a DC as well as uh, being a consultant and training. Now, what, in your opinion, are the top three uh, DC factors to maximize uh, DC, data center uptime? So for example, would it be power? Would it be internet bandwidth, environment, or some other factors? So you get, can I get your thoughts on that, please? Okay, so uh, maybe I'll look at the, like we mentioned, the three major things. I'll look at the cooling, the power, and the heartbeat that is the network. Okay, why I say the uh, power, uh, we all know that, we always assume that the, we have the UPA, we have the generators. So we all assume that when something goes wrong, don't worry, la, I got a UPS, I got a generator. Okay, but we cannot be too complacent. So my advice to all the data center professionals over here, we all know there's an average lifespan for batteries, not only batteries. I'm not sure whether you know that EPA got these capacitors, their lifespan of five years. And I know that when I was in the DC, I always ask for replacement of the battery, I always get turned down. So we become, when after five, we don't do impedance tests whether to maintain the lifespan of the batteries, we are at a very high risk. When anything happens, we can just get the power trick and we couldn't get it back. That is a danger. Okay, don't assume that power. Okay, the rest of the power, I think, is quite straightforward. The other one is cooling. So how can we make sure our cooling, especially incoming server coming in? Have we actually analyzed? Does we mean that every new server coming, we just mount into the empty rack space, ignoring that we have actually maxed the power of per rack? If you're not careful, the way the new server coming in, we just going to maximize the rack space. I think we are actually overpower and we actually go into hotspot in the area. So this is something that we got the very concern of. Network, I'm also mentioned, I think we also saw like M1 down for twice within a month, uh, not long ago. And this is where the MDA room coming in. How do we secure our network infrastructure? And honestly, if you look at the network, right? if you talk about the MDA room or you call it the meet me room, uh, I'm not sure whether how many of you know that 
there are also UPSs provided inside them by the telco providers. Those who are running all data centers, uh, you need to make sure that there's a UPS which is not known to many people, the batteries are still running. Otherwise, when there's a power failure, you can have all the, the server, everything running up, and you realize a uh, meet me room, all the taco went down because the battery went flat. So there's some consideration. As I say, data center risk assessment is so crucial. Maybe the next uh, seminar that I'm going to talk to is about risk in data center so that you actually benefit the data center professional to have a better re data center risk assessment. So these are the three main things I mentioned briefly. Thanks, Nika. Back to you. All right. Thanks. Uh, Thank you can again. I add one point? Yes, sure. sure. Yeah. If you in a data center, if you look up on the ceiling, you can see a firefighting system. Okay? Yeah. We understand that. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes. As a corrosionist, you will go in the old building with the firefighting system has been there for 20, 30 years. Be very careful about the internal corrosion, the bacterial corrosion. Maybe the firefighting the, the, the system, the, the tube thickness is getting thinner and thinner. And if something goes wrong, the water will just come out, you know, especially. So make sure they are chemically treated. Chemically treated firefighting system. In the new one, of course, before you, you fill out with gas, then eh, something virtually go wrong, then the water will come in. But I'm talking about the old building, especially if you hose it in the old building. Be careful about the top firefighting system. Sometimes it may corrode and the water start to come out. Thanks. Hey, thank you, Antoine. Very good point. So that's why I say there are many areas, hidden area that we may not know. So if we really pick up risk assessment, really come up with, I think, believe a lot of data center professionals will have more peace of mind after going through all the risk assessment. Or when they do the risk assessment, I can tell you, they'll be worried. They'll get very fearful because they realize, wow, I got so much risk. Huh? I really need to mitigate it. All right. Yes. And, and just to share with the with the uh, group, right? I think I've I've been in an organization where I, you know the water leaked overnight from the roof, so it wasn't our facility that uh, that had the water leakage problem, but it affected us. So early in the morning, when the business came in, they found water dripping from the ceiling. They found that printers were wet, the workstations were wet, and in the end, they had to activate the recovery site. Right, and so this is this is due to something that is not due not because something went wrong in your organization per se, but it's actually your neighbor upstairs. Right? So I think we we all we all need to be very cautious uh, in terms of the M and E and all this. Like you get mentioned, no, it shouldn't be a tick a box exercise. I think the people that do the checks and all that needs to uh, need to take the work very seriously. Um, yeah, actually, Mika, I, I was just sharing with a friend today. Um, I, I talked about risk. I told him uh, we cannot rely on the facility building management because they'll be the one to tell you that there's nothing wrong because they don't want to be recommended. So they will tell you everything is perfect, everything is perfect. But actually, there are a lot of things inside of having a problem. So you really need to do a physical risk assessment yourself to open up a can of worms or leave at the carpet to go and solve the problem. Otherwise, we are at the mercy of these people. I'm not talking bad about that, but just that they're just worried that, hey, I didn't do the job correctly, I may get reprimanded. So that will be another risk. Yep. Okay. Um, I think uh, looking at the time, perhaps I'll just have one, uh, I'll just throw out one more question. Uh, to the team, and this one I you know perhaps I will get you, Kat and Benjamin to respond. Um, so the question here is, you know, uh, if we were to to be looking for a data center space, right? Uh, whether to co-host our data, uh, our equipment, or even our own internal data center uh, with ISO two two three zero one in mind, meeting the ISO two two three zero one in mind. Um, now how, how can we evaluate the data center, right? So something like, you know, what maybe what are the criteria, what are the key points we should look up at? So maybe if I could request, you know, get from a consultant's perspective, if you could share on that, what, what would you look out for uh, at a, on the DC? And then after that, to Benjamin, right, from an end user perspective, you know, what kind of things do you actually look out for 
if let's say you're shopping around for a DC to host the equipment for your organization. So maybe Tuket, can you start off this, uh, sure. this discussion? Sure. Uh, as a consultant, I will always advise my client if they're selecting data center, uh, you must be at least a tier three data center. That's also part of the MAS requirements. Uh, now, if you are hosting, I think the SS Power 7 comes in very handy because SS Power 7 is a very stringent kind of processes to audit and certify that these provider, they have maintained the data center in terms of maintenance, upkeep, risk assessment to make sure that data center is always in a tip top conditions. Okay, so I would suggest that please look out for service provider who are SS Power 7 DRBCB service providers. <laughs> certified and also but not not only that it's also good as a consultant get someone to do some kind of the risk assessment or a, a visit to the data centers uh, to have a better feel of the data centers and so on okay and if need to then you may actually ask for some of the uh, the risk or the facility uh, management report in order to have a better view because sometimes from the uh, management facility management reports uh, you will be able to see how the data center are being maintained, what are the incidents that have occurred, then you can make another opinion. Now, the other one good thing is that the, the most data centers who are providing services to banks, they actually have OSPA. OSPA stands for Outsourcing Service Provider Audit Report, where again, it will be audited with very stringent guidelines and so on to make sure that processes, facilities are well in place. So do work up all these things before you source for the data centers. I think maybe Benjamin can answer next. Benjamin, you want to unmute? Yeah, okay. Um, from the end user's perspective, I would say that, okay, for ISO 22301 is just one of the criteria. I also look at the, from the perspective of 27,000, because we also need to make sure that the data center has the necessary security put in place. And natural security will cover the CIA part, which includes the availability, and that will include how the data center takes care of the business continuity perspectives. We also will want to look at how the data center handles the resiliency how it handled the fear over if required, whether there is a multi-tail or what, and what is the uh, turnaround time, if let's say there is a major incident, etc. how they handle incident according to which type, uh, which processes, preferably ISO 20,000, because that is uh, one of the aspects for managing incident. Um, so that is roughly what we will look at from the certification perspective. All right, thanks, uh, Benjamin and Tuket. Um, okay, I think one final point I'd like to, I guess, clarify right to to the to the people on the call is you know when when we all look for service providers. Uh, often service providers say, yes, I am ISO 22301 certified. I am ISO 27001 certified and so on and so forth, right? So on the surface, it looks, wow, very good. But one thing I'd like to share is you, uh, as, as a customer, do probe a little further into what or which part of the organization is certified to that standard. So, for example, if uh, if I give an example of a, a bank, let's say Bank ABC, right? Bank ABC, maybe in, in the publicity materials, they say, I'm ISO 27001 certified. Then if you ask them, so which part of your bank uh, is certified to this standard? Then they may say, oh, it's only the, let's say, the desktop, IT, desk, uh, IT desktop is certified to 27001. So if you really think about it and digest what that means, is out of an entire bank with many, many functions, only one particular function or work activity of the whole bank is certified. So similarly, when you look for service providers, don't, don't, don't take it at the surface level when they say, I am ISO 27001 certified and you think the whole organization is certified to that. Uh, that may not necessarily be the case. 
right? So that's just one point to, to note uh, when, when, when you look around for service providers. Yeah. Um, okay, I think it's now 3.31 already. Uh, I think bearing in mind the time and you know, I think some of us may need to uh, go back to uh, our work. So let me bring the session to a close. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining. Uh, at the peak, I think we had something like slightly over 60 participants. So you know, that, that would I thank everyone for joining. And of course, I'd like to thank the panelists, right? Leong Chuan, Yuket, and Benjamin for taking the time off to prepare for today's uh, webinar and to share, share their thoughts. So if, if any of you have further questions, feel free to approach the SES. You can email uh, SES. And the other thing I like to offer, I mean, to share is also, uh, you all are free to join the business continuity chapter, the BCC or the DC SIG, right? So for those of you who are already SCS member, there is no additional membership fee to sign up as members of the chapter or the DC SIG. So why not? Take the opportunity, you know, sign up for sign up in these two chapters, uh, and you'll be kept abreast of, the, uh, let's say, seminars. Sometimes we we do have uh, seminars or site visits. Of course, now it's on home due to COVID, but we do share things like that, even podcasts uh, and and uh, sharing information like this. So yeah, do take the opportunity to sign up as members of the BCC as well as the DC SIG. And there are other, there are about 14 other chapters or SIG in uh, uh, SCS. So have a look at the SCS website and you know, what a, a, whatever area you're interested in, do sign up as a member, right? For example, there's one on uh, AI, also artificial intelligence, right? That is the in thing nowadays. So uh, once again, thanks everyone for joining the webinar. I hope it has been beneficial to you. Uh, and so let me bring the uh, webinar to a close. I'd like to wish everyone a good weekend ahead. Do take care, stay safe, and let's meet again for the next uh, SES event. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.